Hello everyone, welcome to Additional Maths Chapter 4, Indices, Certs and Logarithms, where in this video we are going to look at the part 1 of Certs. So Cert is 4.2 in Chapter 4, under Laws of Certs. And what are Certs actually? Certs are numbers in the square root form, like for example, the square root of the number A. Certs can also be written in the nth roots form, like for example this, nth roots of a, where the a value must be a positive integer. So the square root of 2, the square root of 5, or the square root of 37, or the fifth root of 3, all of these are third numbers. And uh, the square root of 2 can also be uh, read as third 2, and this will be cert 5, cert 37, and this one will be cert 3, order 5, if it is the fifth root. But not all radical numbers. Radical numbers means numbers which has a root symbol with them. Not all of these numbers are cert. For example, square root of 36, the square root of 100 are not cert. So how can we determine which are certs which are not certs. So certs have infinite decimal places and it is non-recurring. For example, if you are given the square root of 2 or cert 2 here, <clears throat> if you key in a calculator, it will show this and actually this, num this decimal continues and it has infinite decimal places which means the numbers here, it continues and it is shortened by the three dots here. And non-recurring means all the numbers here, there is no repeating pattern numbers. An example of recurring numbers are like, for example, 0 0.81, 81, 81, and you can see that 8 and 1 is repeating. But for these numbers here, it is non-repeating. So certs have infinite decimal places and it is non-recurring. Then how about square root of 36? If you try to find the values of square root of 36, it is actually 6. So it means that square root of 36 can be simplified to 6 and it does not have infinite decimal places, meaning that 36 here is not a cert. So now we try to look at more examples. For cert 5, you have this. For cert 11, you have this. So again, all these numbers shows that it has infinite decimal places and they are non-recurring. And what if now you are given a number x of unknown value, which is equal to 0 0.242424 and you can see that this is a recurring decimal. Hence, x is not a cert. So the conclusion here is, if the number have infinite decimal places and it is not recurring, non-recurring, then it is a cert. If it is recurring, then it is not a cert. Now we try to find the relation between certs and rational or irrational numbers. And actually, rational and irrational numbers, we have learned this in Form 1, Chapter 1. We try to do a little bit of revision here. Rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed in the form of a fraction. A over B, where A and B are integers, and B is not equal to 0. For example, 4 are rational numbers because 4 can be expressed in fraction of 4 over 1. 3 over 4 itself is already a fraction then it is rational numbers. 0 0.25 are rational numbers because 0 0.25 is actually equal to 1 over 4, which is fraction. And lastly, 0 0.66666, the recurring number. So is this a rational number? So actually, yes, it can be written as 2 over 3. So after we understand rational numbers, we try to look at irrational numbers. So irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be expressed in the form of the fraction. Like for example, if you have cert 2, since the numbers here is non-repeating, so we cannot express this in the fraction form. Hence, the cert are irrational numbers. So we conclude everything we learned about cert in this slide, where cert is, can be in square root form. Like for example, this square root of 2, it has infinite decimal places, infinite decimal places. They are non-recurring, non-repeating. And lastly, certs are 
irrational numbers. These are the four things, these are the four, four properties that you need to know about cert. So we try to look at more examples here. So a uh, square root of 9, is square root of 9 a cert or not a cert? So the first thing we do, we try to simplify it. Can it be simplified? Type in your calculator. You get cert is actually equal to 3. If it can be simplified, so it is not cert. How about square root of 5? Yeah, it cannot be simplified. And if you want to show it in the decimal form, you get non-repeating infinite decimal places. Hence, square root of 5 is a cert. Square root of 1 over 4, if you try to key in a calculator, you'll find that it can be simplified to 1 over 2. Then we don't have to, uh, the decimal of course is 0 0.5, hence it is not a cert. The third root of, or the cube root of 125 can be simplified to 5, hence this is not a cert. And lastly, the third root of 5 cannot be simplified and we try to show it in decimal form. It is, it has infinite decimal places and it is non-recurring. So third root of 5 is a cert. So now we try to look at some example questions. So the first one, we try to convert the following recurring decimals to fractions. So this is a recurring decimal. We try to convert it to fractions and you... So the first step we always do is we let n or any num any uh, unknowns here as the number that we are going to convert and we label this as equation number 1. We multiply both sides with 100. Why 100? Because we look at the pattern of the recurring decimals 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1. So after two digits, it will repeat itself after two digits, every two digits. So if it is two digits, we multiply by 100. If, it is, if the repeating numbers are only one digit, we multiply by 10. If the repeating num digit is three digits, we multiply by 1000 and so on. So, okay, so we label this as equation number two. And now we take equation 2 minus equation 1. So this minus this, 2 minus 1, 100 n minus 1 n, you get 99 n. And for this part here, okay, so 81.818181, when you minus this, means that this part is cancelled off by this, is minus by this. Yeah, so this part is gone. So 81. Minus 0 is actually 81. We move 99 here, you get n equals to 81 over 99. 0 0.81 at 1 at 1 equals to 81 over 99. So this is a skill to convert recurring decimals to fractions. We have 5.741, 741, 7.1. So this time the repeating numbers is 7, 4, and 1 here. And there are three repeating digits. Okay. We ignore 5 here because 5 is not involved in the repeating, repeating part. Uh, so we let n equals to this because again we ignore, we leave 5. Let's take 0 here, 0 0.7141. Since there are 3 repeating digits here, we multiply by 1000. So equation 2, we multiply 1000 for both parts. You get this. And then Equation 2 minus equation 1, you get 1000n minus 1n, you get 9999n, where this part again, this uh, is this is subtracted by this, and this is this cancelled. You get 741 minus 0 here is 741, and n equals to 741 over 999. Thus, 0.741 repeat. 71 equals to 741 over 999, but this is not the final answer because remember we have a 5 here. So actually the 5 need to be added to this. So 5.741 here is actually equal to 5 plus this fraction and you get 5741 over 999. Take note here, sometimes uh, for recurring decimals, uh, it can be also written as 5, 7, where there are two dots here on top, or there's a bar, which indicates that 5 and 7 are the repeating decimals. So we looked at the second type of question. It says, determine whether the following terms are certs and give your reasons. So the term root of 125 is equals to 5, if we are in the calculator. 
Hence, uh, since this can be simplified, it does not have a infinite decimal places, and this is not a third. Whereas the third root of uh, 100, when you clean the calculator, you will get 4.65 sorry it's a 4.641588 and so on it's a non-repeating infinite decimal places hence this is a third and for this even though this is a fraction okay the sixth root of 64 over 729 when you key in the calculator you can actually simplify this and you will get that it is and it is actually 2 over 3 so this is not a cert. So after we learn how to identify certs, we go to the next part, which is to make and verify conjectures on multiplying of certs and division of certs. So actually you can refer to a textbook on verifying the conjectures. So in this video, I'm going to jump straight to the conclusion where for A greater than zero and B greater than zero means positive numbers here. When you multiply, Cert A and Cert B, you get Cert A B. And when you div divide Cert A with Cert B, you get Cert A over B. We are going to use these two laws to help us to solve the following exercise. So the first one, write the following as a single Cert. So when you are given this, Cert 2 times Cert 3, and by using the first law, Cert A times Cert B equals to Cert A B. So using the first law here, the square root of 2 times 3 equals to the square root of 6 or third 6. For well, next question, the square root of 3 times 4 times x and x. So you have a x squared. Then you have a square root of 12 x squared. Well, the square root of x squared is actually x, so we can write this as x square root of 12. Next question. For division, we use the second law. So this is actually 4 over 2. So 4 over 2 actually can be 4 divided by 2 is actually 2. And how about this? You can combine this. So According to the law, becomes 10a over 5a, where 10 divided by 10 over 5 is actually 2, and a, a cancel, so this is the final answer. So the next part, we try to simplify expressions involving certs. So write the following in the form of a, cert b, where a and b are integers, and a is the largest value. So in this case, so in this case, the first thing we do, we try to find the factors of 50. Yeah, 50 is actually equals to uh, 1 times 50. It can also be 2 times 25. It can also be 5 times 10. Within these three sets of factors, we try to find one which is uh, the perfect square. So in this case, uh, the only perfect square here is 25. If there are more than one perfect squares, we pick the, the bigger one. So we rewrite this, the square root of 25 times 2. Why we are writing this? Because according to the law, the third of 25 times 2 actually equals to third 25 times third 2. And third 25 or the square root of 25 actually equals to 5. That's why we are looking for perfect squares. Okay, and then multiply here is actually this. So we have 5 square root of 2 or 5 third 2. We try again for 27. Okay, 27, we try to find all the multiples of uh, all the factors of 27. It can be 1 times 27. It can be 3 times 9. So here it's uh, quite obvious that 9 is a perfect square. It's a square number. So we take this combination, we write 9 in front, and then this is equals to square root of 9 times square root of 3. So 
a uh, set nine here it becomes three and three. We continue. So fifty four. We try to find all the factors of fifty four. One times fifty four. It can also be two times twenty seven. It can also be three times eighteen. It can also be six times nine. And these are all the possible uh, combinations of the factors. So within this, which are the perfect square? Nine is the only perfect square. So we take this combination. So this becomes nine times six. The square root of nine times square root of six, which is three, six. And for the last question here, four times five, you get four times five, which is twenty. And then third two times third fourteen is actually two times fourteen. So twenty here. So two times fourteen is actually twenty eight. So from this part, 28, we try to find all the possible combinations of factors. So it can be 1 times 28, it can be 2 times 14, 4 times 7. So these are all the possible combinations, all the factors. So within these factors, only 4 is the only square numbers, perfect square numbers. So we take this 20 times this 4 times 7 so this becomes square root of 4 times square root of 7 and then square root of 4 is 2 2 times 20 is 40 so this is your final answer so in the next video we're going to look at the combined operations involving certs yeah i'll see you in the next video thank you